Let's take a look at using Netstat and PowerShell to find listening ports on Windows. So the first thing you want to do is to open up Command Prompt as administrator. And then you can simply type Netstat. And you'll notice that there's not a huge list returned here. This just shows established connections. So if we want listening, we need to use the dash A parameter. And there we get a much longer list. So if we scroll to the top, you'll notice that we have four columns here. So the proto, uh, that's just short for protocol. So it's gonna be TCP or UDP. Then we have the local address, the 0.0.0.0, .0, .0 represents any IP address on the local host. So if you have a host with multiple IPs, it'll be listening to that port on all of them. And then the foreign address, which is of course the target and port that it's listening to uh, remotely. And then the state that that is in. So you notice the foreign address contains resolved names. So in the case that it can resolve the names, it does. And if we wanna skip that, we use dash A, we add an N. So in Netstat, we can pass as many flags as we want on the first dash. So in this case, we're passing dash A and dash N at the same time. So dash N, you'll notice, scroll back up, it's not resolving any of the foreign addresses, which makes it a little faster if you've got a, if you've got a huge list. And the last thing we'll cover with Netstat before moving to PowerShell is to see what processes are using those connections. So we'll add a B to the flag list here, hit enter, and now we can see that which process is using each set of ports. And we can see the SVC host is responsible for a lot of it. So now let's switch to PowerShell. So I'm using PowerShell 7 here. All of this will also work in PowerShell 5 on Windows 10. So we're gonna use the get net TCP connection commandlet. And if we run this without any parameters, we get output that is similar to netstat. Uh, but the cool part about PowerShell is that this is returned as an object. So what that means is that if we want to see more properties, we can pipe this to select object to see a huge amount of data about each of these objects. And, and if we want to filter and only find uh, ports that are listening, we use the dash state listen parameter. And there we can see all of the ports that are currently in the state of listen. And since my screen is zoomed in here, it does look kind of funny. If I pipe that to format table dash A, there we can see a little better output here. And, and you'll notice that the owning process column has a bunch of numbers in it. So those are each of those are, are the process IDs of those processes. So if we want to find the names of those processes, we can use a calculated field and select object. So in this command, I'm piping the output of getNet TCP connection dash state listen to select object. And you'll notice that I'm using the name equals process name expression equals get process ID. And the expression is get process. And then the ID is the owning process. And if I run that command, it's adding this property of process name and the name of the process. So that can be really useful if you want to actually see the name instead of the process ID, which if you're a human probably makes a lot more sense. But if we did want to find all the ports for multiple states, we can actually pass multiple values to the state parameter. So we can pass in listen, comma, established. And now we can see all the ports that are both in established or listening. And if I pipe that to FT-A, it looks a little nicer. And we can also find ports with a very specific remote port. So let's say we wanted to find all processes with the remote port of 443, so HTTPS. So we'll use the dash remote port parameter and pass the port of 443. And there you can see we've got a few processes here that are doing that. So that's how you can use Netstat and PowerShell to find listening ports on Windows. Thanks for watching.